for more than half of the electorate, some 60 million people in our country, it has been a very difficult few days. Because of that, a few students gathered in chapel the other night with just a hastily put together note on Facebook inviting others in. They were not sure what they needed, but they knew they needed something. And they knew they needed each other. And all we did that night was read a few passages from scripture and sang, one after another, songs, all holding up to each other and for ourselves something of hope. What do you lose when you lose? and lose big, when the stakes, at least to you, seem high, when it seems like the world has come to an end, at, a very, at least a very large piece of your world, where do you go? Whom do you seek out? What books do you pick up to read? What songs do you find yourself singing? What trails do you walk? Where do you choose to sit to just hold it, hold it just a little bit longer? Some place in nature that has become sacred to you? A cathedral? Your parish church? How do you regain your footing? What helps you hold it? What keeps you from trying to rush through it or push it away? What if your forest fears do come true and it is the end of the world as you knew it? This is a mass for losers. I wrote the outline of this homily actually two days before the election. At that point in time, it was looking like Hillary was going to win, and the followers of Trump, those who would vote for Trump, were going to lose. The stakes looked high then. They look high now as well. I wrote it because I believe the church should always stand with those who lose, no matter what it is they lose. I really believe that. And that's why for one or another, this was going to be a mass for losers. Perhaps this week wasn't a major loss for you in your life, but someday, someday there will be that loss for you, perhaps a different election, a different year, perhaps something far bigger. Someday your temple, adorned with costly stones, adorned with jewels and gems of every sort. Someday that temple will come crashing down. Everything will be torn down. Not one stone left upon another, as Jesus prophesied. For many around you here, even perhaps if it isn't you tonight, for many, many around you here tonight, that's what seemed to happen for them this week. For them, this was a very difficult week. And this Mass, perhaps any Mass really, could be a chance to lick our wounds a little bit. If not about this week, then perhaps tonight about some other loss already or someday. Someone said to the media this past week that the protesters were crybabies. Maybe it would be good for him to get, have a good cry every once in a while. Truth is, we all need a good cry once in a while. It's going to happen that we will need loser masses along the way in our lives. Masses where those who lost and lost big are welcome. It's going to happen if we dare to engage and engage passionately in something we believe in. 
or to turn away from something that violates almost everything we believe in. Oh, resurrection will come. No doubt about it. The sun will come up in its time. The dawn will break again. The cocoon around the caterpillar will tear apart. But as the mystics remind us, we cannot push that river. We cannot make resurrection happen. And so we need to give ourselves space. That Holy Saturday between Good Friday and Easter Sunday that is never just 24 hours. We need to give ourselves space to take care of ourselves, to take good care of ourselves, and to take good care of each other. That's the first rule of loss, isn't it? And let's just say that for many right now, if we don't give ourselves space and the chance of a good cry, it's going to backfire all over us and all over our country. And if there is a second rule of loss, it is to gently and carefully attend to those energies that come up in ourselves that we call emotions. Yes, I'm scared. There are a lot of unknowns here that are worthy of fear. And yes, I'm sad. Sad that my immediate hopes for certain things that I think are necessary to be in place in a civilized society right now seem to be unrealized. But I'm not afraid of my sadness. But there's anger. And I am afraid of my anger. And I am afraid of the anger of others. But that too, in myself and in you, I have to learn to love. You see, the more we invest in something, the more we invest ourselves in something, some test, some cause, some child, some dream, some work, some institution like the church or our nation, the more we invest ourselves, the more it hurts to lose. Why do you come here Sunday after Sunday? I asked a student once who does not share our faith, and he answered, I come here to cry. Many do, you know. And if you ever need a good cry, I hope you always find a place here for your loser heart. And if there is a third rule, it follows from those many emotions that come with loss. And it rises right out of this gospel from Luke that in times of great distress, we will hear voices, voices from all around us saying, look here, go there, say this, follow me. And I'd like to suggest to you tonight, my friends, that many of those voices are not really outside of us. They're right here. Those voices are from within us. And they are screaming for our attention. And we will find ourselves fighting with what we should have said or done or didn't this time. We will want to get back at and strike out at those who said mean or unreasonable things. We will spend times arguing with them in our minds. We will want to shun them or avoid them or turn our backs on someone or something. We want to quit or even hurt someone sometimes. We will want to turn them off literally. Turn them off. A woman told me two nights ago that she hates President Obama. I hate him so much that for eight years, every time I hear his voice on the radio, I turn it off or mute the TV because I can't stand to hear his voice. Now, are the other side, is the other side going to start doing that with President Trump? Are we going to be so hateful to the man that we're going to mute and turn off? 
and not listen? And I'm telling you, these voices are real. But they do not deserve our attention. Anything in us that wants to be mean or passive-aggressive to anyone ever in order to get back at them is not worthy of our lives. And in the end, it is not satisfying to us and it only adds to the cesspool of the world in which too many are drowning right now. And if there is a fourth way, a fourth rule, it is to remember that this one we seek to follow was a loser in his day. He knows what it's like to lose. He had nothing to show for his efforts. Nothing. His dreams for humanity were nailed to the same tree he was. And he who knows says to each of us when it is our turn to lose, don't listen to those voices. Don't follow them. Those are the voices that come up within you that are the voices of despair and not hope. He goes on to say, there's another way. There's another way through those screaming voices. Go love somebody. Just go love somebody. A child, maybe. A friend. Someone in the hospital or on the street corner or sitting in front of you in the classroom. Help someone who's asking for help. The way through those screaming voices is just to love someone. If this is not a difficult week for you, please know that it is for many around you. And that should matter to you. It should matter to all of us, really. Perhaps it was the anger and hurt of so many in what they call the middle class these last years that was not listened to, that didn't matter to anybody in power, it seemed, at least to them. And if someone had just listened to them, if someone had let their hurt or their anger matter, just maybe things would have been so different this year, so different this election, maybe. This gospel ruthlessly reminds us that someday all of our temples will be torn down. But when it's our turn and those voices come up in us, we can find our way through that gripping anxiety that's gripping our guts and through that broken heart and find somewhere to go with that anger that can build something instead of destroying even more. And help us see something maybe we never saw before. Take the long view, because without it, we will give up. When loss comes and our temples are destroyed, where lies our hope? In one of the most beautiful passages in all, of the Bible, one of the passages I find the most helpful. There are these words ringing across the generations from the Mal prophet Malachi. He speaks. 
Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all the evildoers will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you, but for you who live in my name, for you who take on my character and my values and live those the best you can in this world, for you, there will arise the sun of justice with healing in its rays. The fifth rule of loss. <laughs> 